What did you do with uh, Mr. Kazan? Well, if you were talking about directors of huge directors of great talent and fame, Ilya Kazan is certainly one of them. And uh, certainly, I think the best director that I've ever worked with when it comes to contemporary tragedy. Uh, I don't think there's anyone who understands the political, sexual, and uh, tragic canvas of the modern theater like Kazan did uh, while he was alive. And <laughs> he, it was quite diabolical, of course. He, he, his, eff his effects were achieved sometimes by pitting people against each other. Uh, as you he mean did within a cast? As, a, as, a, as he did with Raymond Massey and, uh, and James Dean in the, the film East of Eden. Um, Ray, Ray Massey told me this story many times, and indeed several other people who were present, Julie Harris also told me, uh, that uh, he was trying to get Ray to really get angry, and Ray, Ray being a very dignified actor, uh, sort of contained, um, was liable not to sort of let go, and in order to, to get him to let go, he put him on camera and he put James Dean off camera to play the off camera lines and told James Dean to just say anything that comes into your head, insult him, insult him, insult uh, and, and Dean called him every name under the sun, you old fashioned has been son of a bitch, you ham, he called him everything under the sun and dear old Ray, there were some women present, uh, some visitors on the set, and and he could he could stand this no longer. This sort of humiliating onrush of insults from this young whippersnapper. So, so he uh, uh, he, he just uh, got into such a, a rage, and, and Kazan kept saying, "Just say the lines, Ray. Say the lines. Say the lines." And let Ray let go, and he was fantastic in that scene. Fantastic. You hadn't seen Ray do that for. For years, and but at what price, you know? Kazan was very determined to get things out of people. I loved working with him, um, and he surprised the hell out of me because, of course, when I worked with him, I tried very hard to be as method as I could. I thought I'll impress him and show him that I can be as methody as I can and really kind of, kind of real and uh, really I'll do the pauses and I'll do all, and I worked like crazy, worked like crazy in one big speech, and suddenly from the back of the audience, Kazan yelled out at me, 60%, Chris, 60%. And my whole world crumbled, a disillusionment. I thought, here's the master of that kind of a, telling me that I've got to be technical. <laughs> he wasn't at all that way. He was a good showbiz director who knew how, who knew how to use all the methods and put them together very well. Very exciting. Very exciting man. There was an aura about him that was undeniable. Remember him walking into rehearsal the first day, passing out cigars, huge Cubans, to the stage hands. They all say, hey, good morning, Gadge. Good morning, Gadge. Hi, good morning, Gadge. Hi, hey, boys. Here, boys. <laughs> nice to see you. He, he said, it was like the godfather. Uh, uh, Is he a, a New a, Yorker? Uh, well, he certainly was a New Yorker in his in every sense of his career, but uh, he was Armenian actually. I think he was uh, part Armenian, part Turkish. I mean, there was a Kazan was a, yeah. a, a strange came from a, a little immigrant, you know, and I think that's why he named names uh, in the those terrible McCarthy trials that so, so many so many people in the business never forgave him for, but I think it was his, the fear that had never left him about being accepted in a new country like America, that he, he had to tell, give names in order that he could secure his position. And it's very strange, isn't it, for a, a man of great intelligence and great power yeah. and to suddenly become afraid at that stage of his life. 